the last step, right? The last little bit of expressions uh, in Python that we've got to write is we've got to figure out when we click on one of these puppies, how do we populate one of these decks with it? That's the last little piece of the puzzle. And we're real close. That's not going to be too hard, I promise. So let's get rid of that for just one minute. We're going to go ahead and on this right hand side, we're going to stay here in the deck so we can see that. We're going to scoot up. We're going to go into real time. We're going to go into container one. We're going to go into our master button. And we're just going to go ahead and write the script here uh, one time uh, because we know that uh, we're dealing with clones. So our uh, script is going to get copied all the places that it needs to be, which is excellent. OK. We're going to add a panel execute that in here. We are going to go ahead and make sure that this is looking for state. It's looking for off to on. And I'm just going to go ahead and edit because it'll be just so much easier to do it this way. Now, I like to use a bunch of variables. I happen to think that's much easier. Um, and we'll see why here in just a second. So we need to know a few things. We need to know our current deck position. We need our A deck, right? We need our B deck. We also need to know, we need a, a little path string kind of placeholder. We want our A deck button. We'll see why in just a second. And we want a B deck button. Okay, so we've got all these things. And we're going to, ooh, hello. These are all going to be variables in their own right. So I'm just going to kind of like do the rigmarole of getting these all set up. At least all these here to start are going to be operators. And so are these two down here. You know, one of the great pleasures of using a tool like Sublime is that you can do really fast editing in your uh, text documents. Just part of the reason I like using one. Okay. So where do some of these things live? We're going to need some paths to track down what some of these things might be. So deck position, right? So that's this business over here. I want to actually be able to figure out something about that. Now, one of my favorite ways to kind of help me when I was first thinking about this is I would use selects and I would just drag them over my network to help me figure out what a path to something was, right? So this is up one, up two, up three in this thing called container deck control, this thing called null one. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, so let's copy that. And we can just go ahead and use that here. That's our deck position. Lovely. All right. So then what about our uh, this like deck A, deck B business? All right. Well, let's scoot up one, scoot up two, head in here, head in here. These are the two things that I want. All right. Well, you know what? I can certainly use a select top, right? This is a little bit like circuitous. That's all right. Because really what I'm doing is I'm using that to help me get this path. It's just, you know, uh, I cheating, and I wouldn't even say it's a cheating way. It's a, a fast way to help figure out what those paths might be. So we've got one for A, and we've got one for B, right? We know they live in the same place. The only thing that's different is their names. That's good. Then we also need to know these buttons, all right? If we go up one, up two, back over into visuals, down into our control, let's grab a select component. We should be able to bring that right over here to the select page, the select panel, relative path. That is what we want. There's A, there's B. And those are actually just button one and button two, right? Button one, button two. We didn't change their names. We can get rid of the select. All right. The last thing that we are going to need to know is we're going to need to know the path to 
uh, fill out this business. So let's think about this for one moment. So what I want to do boop, is I want this path, right? Because, because the, the location of all of our rendered items is all going to be the same. The only thing that changes, right? The only thing that's different is this business right here. I can use that same trick that we practiced earlier with format. So let's go ahead and make a copy of that. We're going to populate a string with that. We're going to take out this digit. We're going to put in some curly braces. And I'm going to put in digit as a placeholder. OK. Now that we have all this business done, now we just need to write a very simple little bit of logic. So what does that mean? What I want to think about doing is that I want to make sure, let's stay here, and let's move up here, and let's take a look over here at our deck position. Right, so if I'm in, right, so if I'm less than zero, right, and what would that mean if I'm less than zero? Uh, let's hit one of these buttons. Okay. So let's say that, or excuse me, if I'm less than 0 0.5. If I'm less than 0 0.5, and I'm going to need to split this again so we can actually split top, bottom. There we go. And we'll scoot up again. And we'll scoot up again. And over here. And over here. Okay, great. Okay. So if this value is 0, Right, which means and logically, right? So if I'm greater than 0 0.5, um, yeah, 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 sure, we can think of it that way. Let's, let's hit a button to make that a little bit more clear. Boop, okay. If I'm greater than 0 0.5, right? So if I'm on the right side, as it were, of the trip from 0 to 1, that means that I'm seeing the output from deck B. Now, if I'm on the left side of that, it means I'm in deck A, right? And I'm kind of figuring out that by looking at my cross and looking at the position of what's going on here with my buttons, right? So B, right? If we're greater than 0 0.5, we are in B. If we are less than 0 0.5, we are in A. Now the reason that's important is that we want to change the deck that is the opposite of what we're in. So if we're looking at the output from B, we want to change the contents of A. If we are looking at the contents of A, we want to change the contents of B. That's the kind of logic that we got to work out here. Okay? So far, so good. We should be able to do that. So if our deck position, right, and this is called Chan 1, so, and here, what's, what do you mean Chan 1? This puppy right here, Chan 1, right, we call this thing our deck position, so if our deck position, and the channel and deck position, Chan 1, if this business is greater than 0 0.5, right, bigger than 0 0.5, which means we are in B, then what we need to do is we need to make sure that the a deck, a deck, that its parameter top is equal to our path string formatted, where digits, digit, excuse me, is equal to my parents digits plus one. Like remember that part of what we did over here is we started at zero. But while this might start at zero, our base's numbers start at one. So this goes one to six, while in here we go zero to five. That's why we're going to add one. It's OK. So we want to format this string, this thing right here, where we add in our parent's digit plus one. So if I click on this one, I want to grab just the number one, 
and I want to stick it in this path. And if I'm greater than 0 0.5, if I'm in deck B, I want to change the contents of A. And then once I've changed the contents of A, then I want the A deck button to be clicked. All right. Now, we can just, in our little if statement here, we can just use else. In the other situations, let's go ahead and borrow all the stuff that we already wrote, because we already wrote it, no reason to write it again. And in this case, I want to change B deck, right? So else, meaning if I am less than 0 0.5, then I am in A. I need to change the target for B and then click on the button for B to get us going. All right, let's save that. Let's give one of these a click. Ooh, it looks like that might have worked. Let's bring up our panel here. And we should be able to see. We can close this business. Boop. And come up here. We should see now, right? This is our output. This is going to swap the deck that we're not in and transition us over. Swap the deck that we're not in and transition us over. Swap the deck that we're not in and transition us over. All right, and there you have it. We've now done our, uh, our first little simple VJ build, where we've got a nice little control panel over here on the left that lets us move between various presets. We've got a nice little transport slider so we can kind of blend that, and we've got some buttons so that we can move between our two decks. I know that's like a little bit of a, a wild and crazy rodeo to get us here, everybody, but that is actually a fairly complex kind of task and something that is not uncommon that you might want to build in Touch Designer. Especially if you want to build something like this and then spout it over to, you know, Resolume or Resolume, however it is that you say that the name of that crazy piece of software, uh, or Mad Mapper or whatever, you name it. There's a lot of really exciting kinds of things that you can do with this technique. Now, like I said earlier, this isn't exactly the kind of technique that I would use for something that I was building that was totally full-featured and robust, but this is a great place to start and get your training wheels on and kind of get a sense for how to navigate what this kind of thing might be. Whew. All right, thanks for hanging on and riding the ride with me, everybody, and happy programming.